Hi students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I am streaming to you live from beautiful Budapest here in Central Europe. If it seems a bit choppy, it's because I'm using ultra low latency so that we're almost in real time conversation, which is fantastic because today we are focusing on IELTS speaking part one of the speaking interview. Ready, set, band nine. Let's do this. Um, the materials, they come to you from our websites, aehelp.com for academic IELTS. And for the general version of the test, uh, check us out at gieltshelp.com. On both of our websites, we have lots and lots of help available for you, uh, including help for the writing and the speaking sections. I'll show you what that looks like super quick. This is the academic version of our website here with the blue background. You can click that big red button to join the premium package and then you'll have a My Student account and in that My Student account you can practice speaking with native speaking professionals or you can practice for free with other students. So make sure uh, to use that. For general IELTS, it's the same kind of layout but with a green background and again you can click that uh, big red button to join us there. So make sure to do that. And then of course we have apps that support these websites and vice versa. So if you haven't yet, Academic IELTS Help app from your app store connects to aehelp.com. You can download and link the app to the website and then use the same account on your mobile app as on your home PC. And the same idea for General Alts, General Alts Help app for the gltshelp.com website. If you have questions about our products or the Alts exam, we are always here for you. You can send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com, and I will gladly uh, return your inquiry. Uh, and on our websites, we have a new feature as well on the academic one. Uh, you can just click that little blue help button that's in the bottom corner there to contact us anytime. Also, just wanted to show you that. Now, students, uh, very, very importantly, um, just refresh the page here because I'm not seeing your comments. Just give me a moment here, students. I'm just doing a quick a refresh here. Okay, there, now I can see all of your comments. Fantastic, there we go. Okay, so I can see that Pwiti and Oas, our members are in the class, same with Abhishek and Moni. Uh, welcome members, and hi Botir, hi Rimshaw. Welcome our regular students, Sabas, as well as new students, fantastic. And something was up with YouTube, so I couldn't see your chat, but now all is well. Okay, um, so very importantly, just before we get into our speaking, speaking practice and speaking strategy, uh, the schedule for this week's classes, we have class today, tomorrow, and the day after. So a special note, uh, there is no class on this Saturday. Uh, members, don't worry, we'll make up that Q&A class next week, okay? I'm just, I'm away on a trip this weekend. So we'll have class today, Thursday and Friday. And tomorrow and on Friday, we'll have two classes each day, okay? So uh, please keep that in mind. The schedule is always on our community posts as well. Thank you, Moni, for the feedback. Moni says, noted. Good, all right. So with that administrative matter aside, let's get into uh, some speaking. And let's just start up with uh, some of these uh, common uh, speaking uh, kind of questions that you get in the speaking interview. So in the IELTS uh, speaking exam, you have about 12 to 15 minutes to show 
your English level, your maximum English ability, as well as your maximum ability to communicate. Uh, keep this in mind, students, okay? Uh, it's not the same, all right? So um, you have, let me just really emphasize this. So you have uh, 12 to 15 minutes to show your English and communication ability. Okay, what do you think I mean by English? So, uh, when I say your English and communication, it's two parts. Uh, what do you think I mean when I say you have 12 to 15 minutes uh, to show your maximum English ability in your speaking, or maximum speaking English ability? Okay, Rajveer says that probably means your vocabulary and your grammar. Yeah, okay, anything else? Vocab, grammar, uh, fluent speech, Eric, um, that's somewhat there too as well. Uh, pronunciation, I would say, is in here as well. Okay. Obviously, these are not completely separate. So your ability to pronounce English as uh, similar to uh, English speakers as possible. Okay. Um, what do you think I mean by communication? Okay. So when I say communication ability, uh, what do you think I mean by that? So your English ability... Sure, it's your vocabulary, your grammar. And when I say your communication ability, yeah, it's your coherence, cohesion, and accuracy. Very nice. Okay, so coherence, cohesion, and accuracy to the questions being asked. Okay, I'll tell you, I'll, sh I'll show you an example. Um, if somebody says to me, uh, what is your full name? And my answer is, I play football on Saturday. Okay, my English is great. That was perfect grammar, great pronunciation, and um, good vocabulary. I play football on Saturday. But it was terrible communication because the person is asking me, what is your full name? So they'd be like, huh? Okay, you're speaking perfect English, but I have no idea what you just said in this, to this question, okay? Um, so that's the difference between speaking English and communicating in English, okay? Now, on the IELTS exam, I'm glad that brought some tears to some of your eyes. Um, so on the IELTS exam, your goal is really to do both, okay? You need to use English and you need to communicate. And many students who have a band level 6, 5, 7 in, in English are communicating at a band 5. Okay? That's one of the most common um, kind of deficiencies that I see. Okay? Uh, and you can imp the good news is, is that you can improve that quickly. Okay? So a lot of students, keep this in mind because it's a lot of you that I'm thinking of here. Okay? So a lot of IELTS candidates have band 6.5 or 7 English. It means that you have great grammar and vocabulary, okay? But seem to have a band 5.5 communication, okay? So the good news, okay, again, just being critical here, the good news is that you can improve this quickly, but you have to work on it, okay? So you have to tackle it um, and you have to work on it, all right? And we're going to do that today and I'm going to give you some more tips on how to do that uh, effectively, efficiently uh, as we go along. But keep that in mind, okay, that a lot of you actually have that lexical resource score of band 6.5 or grammatical range and accuracy of 657. It's your coherence and uh, fluency score where you're missing out, okay? All right. Okay, um, so here we go. Uh, let's just warm up with a couple of these uh, 
introductory and icebreaker questions, and then we'll get into some further strategy about communication, okay? Uh, so this is speaking, so make sure to speak and repeat. It's really important to improve. Okay, uh, so you go into your exam room and uh, the examiner says, welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner. I will give you instructions for this part of the test and I will record it. Uh, what is your full name? Okay, what is your full name? So give me a nice complete answer for this one. We practice this all the time. I challenge you to try different ways, okay? So get comfortable with a few different ways and then uh, practice some different ways to answer this. Pooja says, my name's uh, Pooja Gurung. Please call me Pooja. Okay, Pooja, Pooja, and <laughs> that works good. Uh, Nick Hill says, my given name is Nick Hill and my family name is Paste. Uh, please just call me Nick Hill. Or Paste, I'm not sure Nick Hill, if I don't pronounce it right, my bad. Uh, Botir Rakhmatov says, my first name is Botir and my last name is Rakhmatov. You can call me just BK for short. Did I catch that correctly? BR for short, just BR for short. Yeah, that works. So if you're abbreviating your name like Botir and you, many of your friends call you BR, you can do that. BR is short for Botir. Sure, that works, Botir. Good. Yeah. Okay, Abhishek says, my full name is Abhishek Jane. Please call me uh, by my short name, which is Abhi. Yeah, that works too. Abhi, you can say, um, please just call me by my short nickname, which is Abhi. Okay. Owis says, my full name is Owis Muhammad. Please call me by my first name, just Owis. Okay, that works as well. So, so many nice different ways of expressing this. Lydia Gurgis says, Lydia Gurgis is my full name. Please call me Lydia. That works as well. It's nice and fluent. Okay. Mahil Yohia says, my last name is Paul and my first name is Mahendra. Please call me Mahi. It's my nickname. Okay, very good. Mahi is kind of short for Mahendra, so you could say, please call me Mahi for short because it's so close to Mahendra. Okay. Aksay says, my childhood name is Akshu. Nowadays, my real name is Aksay Chudari. You can call me by my uh, first name, Aksay. Okay, that works as well. Just a slight grammar correction. Pay attention to that, Aksay. Okay. All right. Let's take a few more. Romaine. Adenlete, welcome, new member, says, can we say my full name is, but I go by Romaine? Yeah, you can. So Romaine's asking, can I say uh, my full name is Jose Souza um, Pablo, I'm just making it up, Alvarez but I just go by JS, okay? So yeah, you can do that. So my full name is Jose Souza Pablo Alvarez, but I just go by JS, all right? Some people do have these really long names in some cultures, which is fine, okay? And you can definitely do that, all right? Repeat after me, what is your full name? My full name is Jose Souza Pablo Alvarez, but I just go by JS, please call me that. Okay, all right, cool. Let's keep going. Uh, these are some very common questions. Make sure you're ready for these kinds of questions. There's a very good chance that you'll be asked a question like this in your exam. Do you work or study? And students, if I don't catch your comment, don't panic, don't freak out. I will catch different students at different times, okay? I'll do my best, I promise you. All right, uh, Georgi. Mami Shashvili says, I've been studying uh, in the Faculty of Social Science and Mind Cognitivity at Free University for three years. On the other hand, uh, I've been working as a uh, junior researcher at the same university's uh, Department of Social Sciences, I'm guessing, Georgie, likely. Okay. Um, all right. Um, 
not on the other hand, Georgie, but at the same time, okay, or simultaneously. So careful with your connectives, students. Uh, make sure that your connectives are accurate, okay? Um, working and studying, on the other hand, mm, it's okay. Um, it, it's better to use a conjunction of time, which expresses at the same time. So meanwhile, at the same time, simultaneously, these words would work better, Georgie, to link those two together in that kind of a way, okay? Right? Uh, Simran Atwal says, recently I've completed my senior secondary education, uh, so I'm a former student. I'm not working right now, but I'm looking forward to continuing my um, post-secondary education at the uh, University of Dubai. Okay, Simran, so keep going with it. Finish the idea. Show fluency. Remember, you have 12 minutes to show fluency and communication skills, right? If you're not communicating, it's really hard to give you a high band score because it's hard to judge how well you can actually communicate, okay? So make sure to communicate. Uh, Jainil Gabani says, yes, I'm both working as a technical illustrator at Expert Global and studying um, at the English Language Center of the IELTS exam for further education. All right, Jainil, that works really nice. Well done. Okay, let's keep going here. Vicky Parhar says, currently I'm a student, but my studies will be over next month, and then I will be actively looking for work. I'm hoping to get a job in my field, which is a graphic designer. Okay, Vicky, so a little bit more fluency. Uh, students, for this kind of a uh, question, uh, for the average um, length, you should be looking at about a full 200 characters, which is the maximum that's allowed uh, in this chat. So um, always give an answer, explanation, example, whenever you can. So give details. Details get you high marks. Details show fluency. Details show good communication as long as you're staying on topic, okay? So uh, let's do this. Um, currently, I'm both studying for my master's degree in chemical engineering, and I'm working part-time in a research uh, laboratory uh, at a large pharmaceutical uh, firm, oh, Procter and Gamble. I'm researching pain medication. All right. So um, here's a nice fluent full sentence answer. So do you work or study? Currently, I'm both studying for my master's degree in chemical engineering, and I'm working part-time in a research laboratory at a large pharmaceutical firm, Procter & Gamble. Uh, I'm researching pain medication. So notice the extent of detail, right? Um, and here I'm using a correlative conjunction. Some of you are using subordinating conjunctions, that's fine. Correlative conjunctions are like um, both and together, uh, make that correlative conjunction. And so I'm very specific, I explain my degree. I don't just say my degree, but I say my level of degree, master's degree. And then I say my area of uh, study, which is engineering. And I'm specific with chemical engineering. So using your adjectives and adverbs is absolutely important to get those higher band scores, okay? So fluency, communication, and of course that is connected with your English, so your grammar, your vocabulary. All right, uh, using the progressive form, working part-time in a research laboratory at a pharmaceutical, no, at a large pharmaceutical 
firm. And that's not enough. I'm giving the name of that firm. It's Procter & Gamble. I'm just making this up. Obviously, I'm here teaching you IELTS. I'm not doing this research, but I'm visualizing and I'm researching pain medication. So I even give a little bit of what I do. Why? Because in a real conversation, uh, your counterpart, the person listening to you, if you just told them that you're doing research for a large pharmaceutical company, I bet that their next question would be, oh, really? What are you researching? So why not answer that? What am I researching? I'm researching pain medication. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. So a very common question, uh, what do you do in your free time? You can hear this in a lot of different ways. What do you do in your leisure time? What do you do in your spare time? What do you do when you're not working? So there's a lot of different ways that this question gets asked. Uh, and it's a very, very common icebreaker. And I know people hear it all the time, but in the IELTS, pretend like you're hearing it for the first time and be really, really excited about it. Okay. All right. Amanjot Kaur says, well, I do a lot of activities in my spare time from listening uh, to music uh, to gardening. The type of activity I do depends on the time. For instance, uh, if I'm free for 30 minutes, then I just prefer to play uh, uh, a video game. Okay, Amanjot, that was good. I liked it. Okay, and I really liked how you threw in some quantitative information as well. So it was good. Abhishek says, well, there are a couple of activities I'd like to do in my spare time, such as going to the gym, experimenting with some computer coding, watching a movie on Netflix, and playing console games with my siblings. Last weekend, I watched Memento with my family and friends, which is one of the best sci-fi movies ever. Yeah, Memento is one of my favorites, Abhishek. That's great, especially because I'm a psychology major, and that's my degree. So know the movie well. Very good. Okay, Ina N says, I enjoy doing physical activities when I have some time to myself. My favorite exercise is running. I usually go to the park near my home and I run 5K. Very nice, Ina. I love how you're joining in. I rarely see you. And uh, that's some great quantitative information about running 5K. So I like how you start general about doing physical activities. Then you get more specific. You say you like to run and then you get even more specific and you say you run it around the park near your home for five kilometers. So moving from that kind of general to that more specific and very objectively measurable or visible is a fantastic way to get those high band scores. Okay. That is one of the absolute uh, keys to good communication. All right. So well done. Okay. Well done. Okay, so let's start taking a couple of notes here about what is good communication. Okay, so good communication skills, and this is a really fast way to bump up your band scores, especially if you already have that 65775 lexical resource and vocabulary. Okay, and keep writing, students, I will read some more of yours. So, first of all, okay. One way to communicate well is um, start general but accurate to the question, okay? So don't start talking about the birds and the bees. Don't thank the examiner for the opportunity. Okay. I find it a bit interesting when uh, IELTS candidates say, thank you for the opportunity uh, to answer this question. And I'm like, really? Would you actually say that to someone in real life? Thank you for the opportunity to answer this question. Just answer the question. Okay. Um, so don't, don't use kind of catchy phrases. So be general but accurate to the question and then um, explain and give examples uh, be more specific move towards the specific okay 
Uh, and again, remember to go from qualitative to quantitative information. So I love running long distance. I run uh, 10K every second day of the week. Uh, starting on Monday. Okay, so start qualitative, then quantitative. I love running long distance. I run 10K every second day of the week starting on Monday. All right, now some of you will be like, oh, wow, that's really long distance. But some of you are like, hey, that's not actually that long distance. I do 20K every couple of days. So uh, it depends on the person. What is long distance? What is short distance? Maybe for some people, long distance is 5K. So uh, you start with qualitative, long distance, and then you go specific, 10K, okay, which is quantitative, right? Okay, so that's the kind of uh, skill that you want to show for good communication. All right, let's take a look at a few more. Let's see who's got something like that, all right? Uh, Gaming Demon says, I love to play the guitar. Like a few days ago, I was playing Hotel California. That's my favorite song. And I also like to read Harry Potter books. Okay, good. And I, you can say something like, I spend about five hours a week reading. Okay, just to get that bit of quantitative information in there, Gaming Demon. Irene says, in my spare time, I play with my kids indoor games. Like today, I played Scrabble with them. I like Scrabble because it helps me, me think and uh, build vocabulary. Yeah, Scrabble is a great game for that, Irene. Uh, it also helps your spelling as well, and it also helps you to learn different word forms. So for those of you learning English, which is all of you, uh, play Scrabble. Scrabble is a good game. I, there's digital versions as well, of course. It's a very famous game around the world. All right. So um, Simran says, I love to read books and sometimes I play harmonium, which is an instrument I've always been fond of and I play it in my spare time. Why do you like the harmonium, Simran? Is it the sound that it gives off? The variety of sounds that it gives off? So um, maybe a little bit more there, okay? Mahi says, I hardly get time for leisure activities, but I, whenever I do, I love to play cricket and uh, binge watch some series. I recently watched a web series called Bandis Bandit. All right, good. Okay. Um, okay, all right. Some questions or answers that are a bit off topic there. All right. Uh, Kaleem says, I do a couple of activities in my leisure time. I exercise, I listen to music, go jogging, read books. Uh, it really depends on my mood. Okay, Kaleem, good. You have a list going. So, and you've said that it really depends on my mood. So then finish that, Kaleem. If I'm feeling energetic, I'll do a 5K run. But if I want to just relax a little bit more, I'll close my eyes and listen to some jazz. Okay, so finish the idea, all right? Okay, so there are several activities I enjoy uh, doing in my spare time. Some are active, like going for runs or shooting hoops with my friends while others oh i saw the camera just go off there so just give me two seconds here uh, students i'll get you back on board okay and meanwhile there's my happy little daughter sabella oh, she's just a bundle of joy by the way students do remember to take breaks during your studies according to psychologists it's a good idea to take a couple minute break every 20 or 30 minutes just to let your brain re-energize and get refocused. And so <clears throat> for those of you who are uh, bookworms and really get stuck on the pages, do remember to look up a little bit and uh, get yourself a glass of water, daydream for a couple of minutes. Of course, don't do that during the IELTS exam, but it's good to do during your studies. 
Okay, so um, here we go. Uh, let me finish up this answer and then we'll keep going. So there are several activities I enjoy doing in my spare time. Some are active like going for runs or shooting hoops with my friends while others are more uh, relaxing like curling up with a good mystery uh, novel on my couch and reading for a couple of hours. I just got really into uh, a book that I had read a few years back, The Da Vinci Code, however you spell that. Okay. There we go. Okay, so one more time. Uh, here we go. Uh, what do you do in your free time? There are several activities I enjoy doing in my spare time. Some are active, like going for runs or shooting hoops with my friends, while others are more relaxing, like curling up with a good mystery novel on my couch and reading for a couple of hours. I just got really into a book that I had read a few years back, The Da Vinci Code. All right, now, um, in good communication, students, uh, we do show movement in time with our activities. So uh, we try to um, use a broader range of grammar so that our communication becomes interesting, so that uh, we communicate movement or using the continuous progressive form um, in present time or movement through time by using present perfect or past perfect. So notice how I threw in this little bit of past perfect here I had read a few years back, okay? So showing a little bit of nostalgia um, in this case as well. So make sure that when you're practicing your speaking at home, uh, you spend a bit of time on uh, incorporating some uh, grammar forms like had and have, okay? Uh, I often find that especially the present and the past perfect uh, tend to be missing from a lot of even higher level uh, students' communication. So practice getting a bit of that in there, okay? As early as part one and then definitely in part three as well. Okay. Okay. Um, so now uh, we're doing a good job. Moving along nicely. Let's keep practicing. Again, students... Hopefully you're uh, not just reading and writing, but you're also speaking in this class and you're saying what I say nice and loud, okay? That's really important. I speak with a crisp, clear Canadian West Coast accent. Uh, here we go. Uh, so the examiner says, let's talk about your hometown. Uh, where did you grow up? Okay. Uh, talking about your hometown or the place where you live, that's a very typical uh, kind of topic for part one of the IELTS. Now, they have a million different questions they can ask you about your home and where you grew up. Um, here are just some common ones, okay? Okay, Amanjad says, well, talking about my motherland, I was nurtured in the land of Thuliwal. Uh, vividly remember the park near my home where I got along with my friends who gather in the evening time there where we used to play hide and seek. Okay, um, seems a bit off topic, Amanjot, so a little bit indirect. Okay, try to be a bit more direct. Oh, it says, I grew up in a small town in East Syria uh, called uh, Bukres. It is a beautiful um, rural area located uh, beside the Farat River. Uh, and has a population of about 20,000 people. Uh, very good, Ois. Uh, usually towns and cities are located on the banks of rivers, like Budapest is located on the two banks of the Danube River, on the two sides, okay? All right, or along. We often say along the river. So Budapest is located along uh, the Danube River. Uh, Kevin Bowie says, I was born and raised in Hanoi, which is the most prominent 
uh, city in Vietnam in the north part of the country. It's a place steeped in history. Okay, and then you keep going. Good, Kevin. It's nice. Don't go off topic, right? Saini says, in my free time. Okay, Saini, I'm going to skip that one because that's for uh, the previous question. Simran Kaur says, I'm a native from Delhi, which is the capital of India. It's also very famous for historical monuments. Like what, Simran? Name a monument if you're going to say that. Okay, I thought it was good so far. All right. Rocks Top says, I live in Gurdaspur in the state of Punjab in the north side of India. My hometown has several tourist attractions like parks, temples, shopping centers, and other historic places. Okay. Arash says, in my hometown, there are many recreation centers available for people like swimming pools and parks. Also, the air is, air is fresh. Okay. Not, you don't need the breathtaking. That's a little bit different, the meaning there. Rajveer Singh says, I grew up in Punjab, which is uh, a province of India. It's an agricultural state um, that caters to the food requirements of the Indian population, and it has about 20 million people. Okay, Rajveer, I did a little bit of adjusting there just to make it flow a bit more smoothly, so check back on that at 36 minutes, okay? Anaswara Praveen says, I grew up in the beautiful village uh, of Trisur, Kerala. Um, and my town is well known for festivals. Anaswara, you want to be a little bit more clear there. I'm not sure what you're... So you have a beautiful village and there's a beautiful river. Um, what's the name of the village? I think I'm missing that. Okay. So... You want to create a little bit more clarity. All right, again, students, qualitative and quantitative. So I grew up in the garden uh, city of Victoria, which is the capital city of the province of British Columbia and one of the most western uh, cities in all of Canada. It is a magical place with beautiful forests, lots of flowers, and about half a million friendly citizens. All right. So uh, here we go. Where did I grow up? Uh, where did you grow up? I grew up in the Garden City of Victoria, which is the capital city of the province of British Columbia and one of the most western cities in all of Canada. It's a magical place with beautiful forests, lots of flowers, and about half a million friendly citizens. All right. Next question. What do you like about your hometown? Let's keep going. So I'm going to pick up fluency here and speed. I want you to think fast. Okay. So focus on thinking quickly and um, getting the information out there. Delfam says, I grew up in Itai Bin, a small province in the northwest of Vietnam. It's a densely populated city with uh, developing infrastructure and various entertainment centers. Very nice, Dao Pham. It's a nice answer. Okay. Puiti says, I was born and bred in the coastal city of Partharkurt, which is the third largest city in my country, Nigeria. Uh, it's a beautiful industrial city and uh, is densely populated and bubbly too. Okay, good, Puiti. It's nice. You have some unnecessary words in there. Good communication is also concise. Seni Sarani says, I like that my hometown uh, is located conveniently 
among a mountainous terrain, so it has cool temperature and no strong winds or hurricanes. It has many uh, beautiful vistas uh, like the palace and the botanical garden. Very good, Seni. I made a few corrections. Check back on that, okay? All right. Abdu Kafuzab says, I was uh, born and raised in Tashkent, which is the capital of Uzbekistan. Tashkent is a large and historically rich uh, city. And what do you like about Tashkent? So let's keep motoring here, students. Let's get into uh, the next uh, pieces of question details. Uh, Niranjan Kakade says, when I was growing up, my city had lots of open space, gardens, and playgrounds. I loved the fresh air and loved playing soccer outdoors. I also really enjoyed that my hometown is a cultural capital. Okay, Niranjan, very good. Instead of saying love, 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 try to start paraphrasing. So um, it's okay if you have some words that you repeat as part of your diction, your speaking style, but you definitely want to paraphrase students as much as you can, okay? All right, so um, aside from the people and the beautiful nature in uh, Victoria, I love that the city is surrounded by many kilometers of Pacific Ocean coastline as it sits on the southern tip of Vancouver Island and across the state or across the strait of Juan de Fuca I can see the sublime snow-capped Olympic mountains of the state of Washington. All right. So um, what do I like about my hometown? Aside from the people and the beautiful nature in Victoria, I love that the city is surrounded by many kilometers of Pacific Ocean coastline as it sits on the southern tip of Vancouver Island and across the Strait of Juan de Fuca I can see the sublime snow-capped Olympic mountains of the state of Washington, okay? So what I'm doing here, of course, because we're talking about a physical location, a place, is I'm giving as much visual description as possible so as to bring my listener into my world of imagination or my world of visualization in this case. You want to practice that, students. You want to practice visual language. You want to practice creating visual language. One good way to do that is describe your hometown uh, to a friend or to a fellow student and see if they can draw a picture of it, okay? It's kind of a fun exercise I used to do a long time ago with my ESL students as I got one of them explaining their hometown and the other person drawing it and seeing how well it kind of matched uh, with what the person was saying. It's kind of fun. You can get some good laughs that way. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go to the next question. So again, working on building up some speed and fluency here. How do you describe people in your hometown? Give me an answer for that one. So how would you describe the people in your hometown? Okay. Pandia Viren says, the people in my hometown are very helping and they're hardworking because um, my hometown is under development and we are getting close uh, to the same level of infrastructure as other cities. 
Okay, Pandia, good. Careful, you're getting into a, a difficult explanation where you're comparing the development of infrastructure like homes, uh, business centers, roads, um, utilities, uh, and so forth. So uh, careful not to get yourself into a tricky situation where it's hard to explain what you mean, okay? All right. Nagayman says, people in Hanoi are generally friendly and helpful, although they all seem very busy with their hectic life. Um, in this prosperous city, I once got lost and um, people helped me to find my way uh, without much difficulty. Okay, good. All right. Very nice. Okay, Abhishek says, well, uh, through the native language, which is uh, Gujarati, not only is it an Indo-Aryan language native to the Indian state of Gujarat and spoken predominantly by Gujarati people, but it is the sixth most widely spoken language in India. All right. Um, that's how you would describe the language of people in your area, Abhishek, but that's not necessarily describing the people of your hometown. Okay. Uh, Rajveer says, individuals living in my hometown are full of enthusiasm uh, and hard work. Um, Rajveer, don't double up. Enthusiasm is hard work. When somebody's enthusiastic, they work hard. It's due to their efforts that Punjab becomes the agricultural state and contributes 10% of India's GDP annually. Very nice quantitative information to show the hard work of the people in Punjab by contributing one-tenth of the nation's gross domestic product by the way students gdp means gross domestic product okay it's a very commonly used acronym uh, in business and in english and globally okay uh, ar says uh, people in my hometown are quite um, helping and friendly uh, to residents as well as foreigners delhi is a melting pot of eclectic ethnicities and cultures and so the vibe is chill and welcoming very nice okay i'm happy to read that so many people are quite positive about the attitude of people in their hometowns it's fantastic to read that okay i haven't read any negative points yet although there might be some but i haven't read any yet so it's really nice that so many of you are so optimistic about um, the people in your hometown i'm really happy to read that Raghav says, people are generally amiable and gregarious rather than belonging to working classes, so they are rather busy on weekdays um, as they live uh, routine schedules uh, when not at work. Okay, Raghav, that's nice. Some good use of vocabulary there, absolutely. All right. So, um, I would definitely say that most people in Victoria are quite well off. There are many business men and women as well as um, government workers in the city as it is the capital of the province. As such, people generally tend to be quite educated and optimistic, uh, even though they seem preoccupied at times they are open to helping others when asked okay uh, so uh, here we go how do you describe people in your hometown I would definitely say that most people in Victoria are quite well off. There are many businessmen and women as well as government workers in the city as it is the capital of the province. 
As such, people will generally tend to be quite educated and optimistic. Even though they seem preoccupied at times, they're open to helping others when asked. All right, so lots of vocabulary there. Uh, these days, by the way, students, uh, the chat is preserved in these live classes, so you can go back and kind of filter through uh, a lot of the chat and see what kind of vocabulary your fellow classmates used to describe their town and learn from each other. Okay, uh, so here we have a few more questions. Uh, when is it a good time to visit your city or town? Why? If a visitor wants to go shopping in your town or city, where is a good place and why? Has anything changed in your hometown in the past 10 years? I challenge you to try these questions on your own or with a partner. Um, and again, pay attention to uh, what I talked about earlier. So not just your vocabulary and grammar, but having good communication going from general to specific and explaining with qualitative and quantitative information. Uh, tomorrow we'll have some reading for members and then we'll follow that up with some academic task one writing for everyone. So hopefully I will see most of you here again tomorrow for the reading and task one writing class. And until then, if you'd like to get more videos in HD quality as well as practice exams and lots more help to increase your band scores, I highly, highly recommend checking us out at aehelp.com for academic IELTS, joining our premium courses there, and gieltshelp.com for general. Lots of great answers today, great participation, everyone. I love seeing that. And a lot of optimism from many different corners of the world, which is really fantastic. You're very welcome, Eugen. Thank you for the emojis. Axe, the hearts, you're welcome. Have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday, everybody. If it's late in your country, have a nice uh, rest, have some sweet dreams, wake up fresh for the next day. I'm Adrian signing out for Bu from Budapest for now. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.